Hello? So now it's working. Great. So good afternoon, all. Thanks for staying for the last session. So actually, just to give you the background, I already did it once, but it didn't record. The mic didn't work, so I'm doing it again. But thanks for, for coming anyway. Uh, so my name is Christian Vette. I'm taking care of the SSD product marketing for Samsung in Europe. And I'm here today to talk about what we are doing in terms of SSD. So what we are actually doing is we are integrating compute uh, into the storage to basically create intelligent storage, what we call smart SSD as our product. So to first get into the, let's say, the background, why we're doing this. So actually, the key problem that we're trying to solve is related to data movement. So if we go back six, 60 years, we needed a trailer and a bunch of strong guys to move 5 megabyte of data. So this was this is the famous 5 megabyte HDD from IBM, so one of the very first storage devices in the world, which was, of course, a huge device. But fast forward six years, uh, AWS announced the Snowmobile, so basically a truck full of HDDs with 100 petabyte capacity. So one might ask, what's, what has been the development here in 60 years? Is it the capacity or the fact that we moved from a trailer to a truck in terms of the density? So looking at the future, I hope it doesn't look like this, that next, in the next 60 years to move huge amounts of data, we will need a container ship or a cargo plane just to, just to move data around. Of course, these are not very, let's say, real world examples. We are not moving an exabyte of data, data every day. But even if we go back to, let's say, to the SSD level, to the HDD level, and the interface, actually, what we can find out, the ugly truth is bandwidth is not scaling up as fast as the capacity. So even though there's now a lot of discussion about new interfaces, like PCI Gen 5 is just around the corner, even though Gen 4 is not really even available, and there's all these new interconnects, like OpenCAP, PC, Excel, Gen Z, et cetera, actually, deep down, the interface can never scale up as fast as the fast as the capacity. So, what this means ultimately is that the bandwidth per terabyte will continue to go down uh, as time moves moves on because the capacity will always continue to uh, grow faster than the interface. So basically, what this means is we will have more data sitting behind an interface that is not scaling up. So. The problem we see, actually, one of the things we and some of the startups in the industry have done is, what if we think of another way to do computing or a traditional architecture? So that's where the term computational storage has been, has been coming from, uh, where our solution is called Smart SSD. So if we look at today's architecture, uh, basically SSD, HDD, any kind of storage device is essentially it's just a dump device working as a black box. So the host gives uh, gives a command that I need this data from LBAs XYZ, and the storage device delivers. But there is no intelligence. There is no filtering. There is no scanning, no indexing, basically no activity from the storage device aside for providing the data. But the problem is the interconnect between the storage and the compute is basically not fast enough to keep up with modern workloads like AI, machine learning, deep learning, all these buzzwords that we've probably heard in every presentation today. Uh, because all, in all of these applications, we're actually we're trying to analyze tons of historic data, sensor data, whatever data it is. But we don't have enough bandwidth between the compute and the storage to actually do real-time big data type of analytics. So, what we thought is, what if we take some of the accelerator capabilities and put those inside an SSD? So what if we remove the need to funnel data from storage to compute for processing? What if we do some at least simple level computation in the storage device itself before uh, moving the data to the CPU for further analysis or, or other tasks? So. In the past 18 months, we've made a uh, basically prototype of smart SSD. So our, let's say, first prototype level design is, let's say, a very simple device. We took our mainstream NVMe SSD PM983 that we are shipping in high quantities to hyperscalers and various other customers, and we basically 
integrated that plus Axilinx off-the-shelf FPGA into an adding card form factor together with a PCIe switch. So basically, all this was done with pretty much off-the-shelf components. Uh, and we then took this POC prototype level solution to a select, uh, a handful of select customers uh, to basically test whether this kind of concept of computational storage can really work and what can we do in terms of uh, actual real world workloads. So one of the POCs we did was with one of the largest hedge funds in the US. They have more than half an exabyte of data. So basically what they do is they collect data from all these kind of uh, all these stock indexes. So basically uh, stock prices are pretty much changing every second or even multiple times a second. They are collecting all the data globally to a centralized storage that they use for their analytics purposes. So one of their kind of common algorithms that they use is uh, weight, uh, volume weight average pricing. So basically to make some investment decision, they use this kind of uh, an algorithm to, to check uh, a stock's price in a very long term time period. Uh, but this task is very IO intensive because if you, th if you look at billions of data points, there's actually a lot of funneling that goes through. So actually, th there's a lot of data being sent from storage to compute to actually do the actual analysis to come up with the, with the statistical number. So we solved this problem by basically integrating their, uh, their algorithm to the smart SSD. So basically ported it to Axilinx FPGA. And all the computation was done within the SSD itself. Uh, what we managed to do is get more than three times the throughput. So much faster computation times uh, to get this kind of uh, statistical analytics that the companies are looking for. And in any kind of financial workload, of course, Time means money, because especially uh, quantum trading type of workloads where it's all based on algorithms, if your workload is or your algorithm is running 50 microseconds faster than your neighbors, it means you are likely to find an arbitrage on the market that has not been found by something else or someone else, meaning you're making riskless profit. The other benchmark we did was, let's say, more industry common MariaDB. So we took the TPCH benchmark basically and what we actually found out during this benchmark is almost 90% of the data in this benchmark is actually filtered out so we're sending data to the host 90% of that is actually just scrapped it's not used for anything so of course that's filling the interconnect that's filling all the caches for basically no purpose so by using, using the smart SSD, doing the computation within the SSD and not funneling the data to the host, we again managed to improve the performance by more than three times compared to a normal, uh, normal SSD. So basically the same system, but with, uh, with the smart SSD instead. And a third example, which is actually very interesting from, from, again, from a more real world example is from an airline company. They use Spark for their internal data analytics uh, and database. Uh, but the problem they face is modern airplanes planes are producing too much data for them to actually process that data in a time that is relevant for their business cases. So I mean, a modern 787 Boeing or all the other, let's say, modern what they call IoT connected planes, they can produce petabytes of data on each flight. But what these companies actually need to do is when the plane lands, they need to offload that data to a kind of edge data center to perform data analytics, to actually check if there's anything they need to do with the plane before it takes off to the next flight, which is likely to be in the next hour or th even 30 minutes. So again, by using smart SSD, they managed to cut the query execution time to basically 25% of what it used to be. And the benefit for them is like predictive maintenance, for example. If they can find out that there is something wrong in the plane, that they need to replace some component or do at least a further mechanic check before, before it takes off, they can, in the best case, they can actually avoid canceling a flight, which for any airline is going to cost th tens of thousands of dollars for compensation, for new flights, for hotels, all these kind of things actually for them. Uh, cutting down the time to do analytics is actually very critical. But another key thing we found out is 
smart SSD can scale. Because a normal architecture where you have two CPUs and maybe four SSDs, eight SSDs, 16 SSDs per server, the problem is it doesn't matter if you add more SSD because the CPU and the interconnect will still be the bottleneck. Uh, and it doesn't scale even if you add more storage. But the benefit of smart SSD is since every storage device has its own compute unit, even if we add another SSD, there is no additional workload. There is no additional pressure on the host or the interconnect. So what we managed to do is basically performance can scale almost linearly as, as we add more smart SSDs to the same system because there is computation uh, integrated within, within the storage. So we are currently working with, uh, so basically today we have MySQL and, uh, and Spark ported to the Smart SSD platform. We also have some partners who are working with uh, Cassandra and PostgreSQL to, to, uh, to also port those kind of databases to Smart SSD. But we're also looking for, let's say, other non-database type of workloads. Because in the end, what we have is a traditional, normal Xilinx FPGA. It's not a custom solution. It's a really off-the-shelf FPGA. So we're also looking at things like video encoding or even things like uh, storage offloading. So nowadays, all storage devices or storage servers have a huge storage uh, stack with compression, decompression, encryption, erasure coding, a lot of actual computation going on to, to manage the storage. So what we're also thinking is, what if we can offload that all to, to a smart SSD? So then if you look at a concept like Ethernet SSD, where you can have a huge capacity SSD basically working as an independent storage subsystem, in that kind of application, having the computation in the SSD will make a dramatic, dramatic difference. But of course, any customer can also bring their own IP. So basically, the way a smart SSD exposes itself to the host is as two standard Xilinx FPGA functions and as one NVMe device. So actually, from a host perspective, the smart SSD is not, it's not anything unique. It's nothing special. Uh, because it exposes the normal FPGA and NVMe SSD functionalities that you would already have in a traditional system. So what this means is if, you, if a customer already has some kind of code or, or whatever kind of development for Xilinx FPGA, porting that to smart SSD uh, can be done in no time. And the workflow is exactly the same as you would work with any, any type of other Xilinx FPGA. But we're also looking towards the future. So the POC solution we have today, so basically the adding card with the dedicated Xilinx FPGA, a PCA switch, and the SSD, that's more or less just for POC. So what we wanted to prove is by eliminating this, in, uh, this SSD to host uh, data transfer, we can improve actual performance. But, so the point of the POC was basically to have this internal data transfer between the FPGA and SSD rather than going through the host. But we also know this is not enough. So actually what we're now looking into is how can we integrate the FPGA into the SSD controller itself? Because SSD controllers are also basically following Moore's law. So every year we are getting to a more advanced process. But in case of SSDs, we don't need 64 cores or some other functionalities in the chips to to enable the basic SSD functionality that we have in, in a normal block device SSD. So actually what we're doing is we're using Moore's law to basically bring in more functions to the SSD itself, which can be functions like FPGA uh, computing, computing in the form of next generation smart SSD. Plus, of course, we understand adding card form factor is not really mainstream today. So what we're also doing is trying to minimize that into a U.2 to make it more adaptable in real world. Uh, and we will, be, we will be having the first samples in soon, soon as well. So that will conclude my part on the Smart SSD. So I'd just like to highlight a couple of other things we are, we're doing here today at OCP. So today we're also shipping the first PCI Gen 4 SSD. So it's already publicly available, uh, sampling to various customers. 
uh, and it's basically the first Gen 4 solution on the market today. So especially for AMD Rome based systems that can already support PCI Gen 4, this can be an ideal, ideal solution. The other thing we're doing is, together with a company called Lightbits, who are one of the pioneers of NVMe over TCP. So with them, we're also working on a remote POC test bed to basically enable any customer to effortlessly test uh, how NVMe over TCP works and what kind of benefits it might bring to their workloads. And as a final thing, we also have, or we recently announced, uh, or th recently there was an announcement that key value SSD is now being ratified as, as a SNEA spec. So there's finally an open uh, industry standard uh, spec for key value SSD. And we also announced that we already have, have the first standard compliant key value SSD available. So also, if you have any interest to discuss about, about the key value SSD, we will be happy to, to, to explain more what it does, how it works, and how it can benefit your workloads. So I hope to see you at booth B7. Thanks for your time. and. Enjoy the show.